Good afternoon again. Um, Daniel here, yours truly, from the Love March movement. Just wanted to to bring across um, a message on my heart on love. Love is such an important concept. Um, God has really laid some heavy stuff on my heart. Re, re love. Um, if you just think quickly about First Corinthians thirteen passage, you know, if I speak with the tongues of men and have it, of angels but have not love. I am only like a clanging cymbal, a noise-making instrument, um, and a few other stuff there. But what I really want to focus on right now is the Romans Romans 12 verse 9 passage, which I find to be so powerful. So grab your Bible. Grab your Bible. Let's read Romans 12 verse 9 to 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Powerful, powerful passage. I think we'll bring it too far because I'm going to be looking at it a lot right now. It starts off in a very powerful way. Um, speaking about love. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Now you might find it interesting that after using the word love and you know going in to talk about love, the next subject of a sentence well, the next verb of, of the sentence is hate. Now, a lot of people don't, don't get this. Like, what? You know, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Why, why is there hate in love? That does not make any sense. Well, I, I really want to talk about that right now. Because that is popular misconception in, in our culture right now. That love means that you must accept everybody and everything from everybody. Right? There is no wrong. Really? That's not what the Bible says. And therefore, that is not what reality is at all. You see, it is important that we hate evil. Because if we love evil, we're going to be messed up. We're going to be very messed up. Right? Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Cling to what is good. Now, if I love somebody and they have particular tendencies, let's say they're a fornicator, all right? Which means they have sexual marriage. I love, I, I have that unconditional love, that agape love for a brethren. And I know that he, he sleeps around a lot, right? Now, if I seriously love him, and the word of God is true, and it is, right? Sin leads to death. Sin leads to death. Now, from this verse, Romans 12 verse 9, it is important that we hate sin. We must hate sin. Epitome of all evil, sin. Right? 
So if I, if I understand that sin leads to death, and I care about this brother, and I see that having sex, sleeping around, is leading him into death, then the logical conclusion is that I have to talk to him about that. Right? I have to, I have to say something to him. Because love must be sincere, and we must hate evil, and we must cling to good. So if I care about my brethren, I'm going to talk to him about it. Right? Because the word holds the world together. That is true. Um, next part, cling, cling to what is good. I think that is self-explanatory. Cling to what is good. So make sure you stay on the right track, right? And that's what love is, right? So love must be sincere. What is evil? Cling to, to what is good. Is, is, and, and this whole passage right here is kind of defining love. What does love actually look like in interacting person to person? What does love think like? Love thinks like hating what is evil, cling to what is good. Looking out for your brethren. Right? Verse 10. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. So this is talking about selflessness. Which, which I have found that selflessness is really the big trademark of love is selflessness. Right? Jesus Christ loved us and gave himself for us. And we should give ourselves for our brothers. Crazy, crazy scripture that is. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. So, yo, make sure. So, you have the thing hard and you're zealous about it. You want to preach the gospel and you want, you want to talk to people about Christ and you want to speak to, 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 to Christians who are sleeping and stuff like that. Right? Complacent. But make sure you keep your spiritual fervor. Right? Fervor has to do with your understanding of the word and how on point you are. So you don't want to just be chatting, chatting, and being all zealous and chatting one bag of rubbish. But you want to chat, and when you when you minister, you want to minister stuff that is true, stuff that are rooted in the Word of God and in Christ. Important stuff. Um, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. That's verse twelve. Now it's interesting. It is very interesting that it says. Um, you know, understand joyful in hope, right? So as you as you look towards the future, allow the Holy Spirit to give you that joy, right? Everybody understands that, that joy that you are going to receive what Christ has promised, right? The joy in in that patience. But here another patience, patience in affliction. Now we don't have much time to get into this, but notice it didn't say pray as hard as you can that affliction will end, and it will. That is an important point. Be patient in affliction. So endure hardship and affliction. And be faithful in prayer. That's something that we definitely need to be doing. Be faithful in prayer. Right? Because prayer changes things. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Verse 14. Huge verse. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Bless and do not curse them. Where am I? Right. Just to talk about that a bit. Bless and do not curse those who persecute you. Powerful, powerful concept. Naturally, we have the inclination to thump somebody in them face that thumped us in our face so when we get cursed and beaten up we want to curse back and beat up but god is saying look that's not the way to go right we're talking about love right now that means that even as people hurl insults at you you bless them so that's 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 a love that you can't find in any other religion or anywhere else it's an amazing love. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Skipping down. Do not be proud, but be willing to, to associate with people of low position. This is a big part of love. 
be willing to associate with people of low position. Those people who you would consider sinners, be willing to associate with them. Those people who you consider worthless, either worthless or workless, right? Um, you know, whatever. I don't want to list any position because then it would seem like, yeah, you know. But be willing to associate with people of of low standing. You know, you know, people who pick up garbage. You know, stuff like that. The the the, the guys on the on the road on the street, right? Let your heart go to. To the to the windshield wipers and stuff like that. Verse seventeen: Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Right. Nineteen: Do not take revenge. Right. I want to tell you, just look into this passage because there's a lot. Each of these points is like a message in itself. Right. But I want to highlight the the points about loving your enemies. Right. It's important that we love our enemies, even as the love marriage movement we. You know, we're growing up and we, we, we're striving for sexual purity. And in that process, we fall in the category that persons call their enemies, right? These Christian fundamentalists that re te 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 the bigots, those who are, you know, hate speech people, you know, stuff like that. And we pick up all these tags, right? I want to encourage us that even as we... As we speak out for sexual purity, and a lot of persons align themselves themselves against us, that we bless them, and that if they hurt us, that we don't take revenge, but that we leave God to avenge. Right? Now the last verse. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Now, a lot of persons don't, don't get what that burning coals part mean, right? But done a bit of research on that. What exactly does it mean? I don't think it means that you know, you're going to you're going to end up um effortlessly killing them or you go burn them up so they can't have hair anymore. Right? Um what I found is that it's a it was a tradition in that day that when somebody was repentant when somebody was asking for forgiveness that they would walk around with like a basin with with coals in it right burning coals in it to symbolize the fact that they're apologetic that they are sorry for what they did right right so if your enemy is hungry feed him this is so important right? we, we miss these important stuff right we kind of gloss over scriptures like this because it's hard, it's true, it's hard, but it's important that we love our enemies like Christ loved the church. Romans 5 verse 8, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were backstabbing, spitting in his face, mocking him, you know, he died for us. Our goal is, is to be like him, so we really need to take this stuff seriously. And I want to encourage us to really think about this Romans 12, 9 passage. And really see how we can apply it to our lives, right? It's something that we really, really need to, to look into. Do not overcome not do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, I just want to say right here, the greatest weapon that we have as Christians is not the ability to declare things over people and it happen. It's not tongues. It's not giving your body to be burnt. It's not giving money to the poor. It's not prophecy. It's not faith. The biggest weapon, the thing that the enemy is most afraid of, when I say enemy, I mean the devil and his minions. The biggest thing that the enemy is afraid of is love. Love is our greatest artillery. As 1 Corinthians uh, 13 says, yeah, let, me just, let me just turn to that quick and you can turn with me. Corinthians is after, right? After Romans. First Corinthians 13. Just to share some of my heart right there. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. If I have faith, if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. 
If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Right, so I want you to imagine this. So God is saying, look, if you if you if you can speak in tongues, you know that's that's awesome. Woo, tongues. You know, prophecy, woo. You know, you can you can speak to the mountain. Mountain, be moved. I believe it, I receive it. Hallelujah. You know, if you can if you can do that stuff, you can't even give your body to be burnt for the cause of Christ. You can spend your life fighting the, the, the secular agenda and give yourself. Take all the beatings, take all the insults. But if you did not love it says you're a noise maker you are nothing you gain nothing and if, if God says that you gain nothing then you you are no insult to the enemy if you're not if you're not contributing to you know positivity on God's side then obviously you're not impacting on the negative side the devil not afraid of people who speak in tongues People who prophesy, people who give their bodies to be burnt, people who 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 um have the gift of faith and can understand our mysteries and our knowledge and interpret all kinds of literature and, and exhort the word. The devil is not afraid of those people if they have no love because they are worthless. Absolutely worthless if they do not love. The greatest weaponry that we have, how we overcome evil with good is by love and the most powerful demonstration of that is loving your enemy now some of us have the have the pleasure of having persons in our lives that call themselves our enemies i want you to understand this god is setting you up by these people to be able to show his kingdom you have been divinely appointed to be someone that can show the greatest demonstration of being a Christian ever. Loving your enemy. I encourage you to make use of that. Ask the Holy Spirit and he will guide you. He will empower you. Look, this, this walk is never, we are never on our own. God is with us. And he gives us the strength to do what he asks us to do. We move and we operate, we act, we think by His Spirit. Because by ourselves, we are hopeless. By myself, I am very hopeless. Exceedingly hopeless. Rich in hopelessness. But it's by the Spirit of God that I'm able to even speak right now. And to bring this word. So if you can, if you can just pause right now and think about... You know, anybody that you know that would call themselves your enemies or that you may even consider enemies because, you know, they always cut them eye after them, always gossiping you, they always treat you bad, maybe even in your own family, in your own home. God is able to give you that strength to love your enemies. And in that way, you will overcome evil with good. Love must be sincere. You can't fake that love now, you know. It has to be sincere. It has to be real. And that... that that real love, you know, you can't buy that in a shop. You can't conjure up a feeling in your chest. Mm, I feel the love. I feel the love. You know, it's not like that. This love is by the Holy Spirit. If you're not a Christian, you don't, you don't even think about it. You have no access to this kind of love. Because this is God's love that he pours into our hearts. If you name the name of Christ, you decided to commit your life to him, you have access to great power great resources the resources of heaven the greatest of that those resources flows out of that intimate relationship with god where as we grow to love god we grow to love people because god don't want us to treat people bad you know look at jesus's life the only people that jesus really um, spoke harsh little, were the religious people, the prideful, messed up religious leaders. When it came to sinners, he associated himself with them. You know, they were chatting, oh, you're going to that sinner house? Jesus, you know the kind of lady that, wiping your, that, that washing your feet right now with her tears? 
if you knew that lady, you wouldn't make her touch you. You know? No, don't. You know, Jesus, don't let the children come to you. Children are insignificant. They are a waste of time. All I do is give trouble. Jesus associated all with women. Jesus was speak, speaking to that woman at the well. You know, he associated himself with with persons who are considered of lower stature um, by society standards. Let's do the same. Let's walk in Jesus' footsteps. Let us commit to loving everyone, not just our enemies. Everybody, fornicators, homosexuals, the the antichrist, let's commit to loving, right? And again, that doesn't mean that we're going to say to them, "Oh, you know, I love you." So that means that you can do anything you want. You know, I love you so much, so you'll never do wrong. No, no, no. Loving people means that you care about them enough to let them know when they are wrong. To guide them in the truth. It's extending grace and truth. The grace says, look, Jesus Christ, you know, he set me free. I used to be in sin. I used to be addicted to porn. I used to be drowning in, you know, masturbation or, or whatever it is. And I used to have sex all over the place. Whatever it is, it's, it's being able to admit that and remember that fact that Jesus made you holy so that you, you can extend that hand to people and say, look, I know what it's like, but you don't have to be that way. And the truth, the truth is sin leads to death, but Jesus Christ will take the punishment for your sin and set you free if you would let him. And that's how we love people. That is our aim. That's our aim. Alright. I encourage you. Be strong. And open yourself to the Holy Spirit so he, he can flood through your life. And impact this world for him. Lord, let us pray, Lord, for everyone right now that will hear this word, that has heard this word. Pray that you would touch their hearts, God. Thank you so much, Lord, that you are in the business of pouring into us and equipping us to fulfill the tasks that you call us to. By faith, God, we receive the ability to love our enemy. By your Holy Spirit, God, we receive, Lord, that ability and that desire, that compassion, Lord, to speak to our friends who are caught in sin with grace and truth, loving them for real. Not being content seeing them go to hell, but actually caring about them. We receive from you, Holy Spirit. All that you have for us in this arena. Empower us, Lord, to love our enemies. Lord, when we get insulted, when we get punched in the face by the enemy, by people that call themselves enemies, let us bless them. Let's, Lord, help us not to curse them, God. Well, Lord, let us love them like how you would. Gently showing them the way and just being there for them. God, there are some people that we will come into contact with that will need counseling and pray that will give us the wisdom, Lord, to know that we can't take on the whole world. Some of, you know, some of us don't have adequate training. But, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to put ourselves out there so that people can get help. If not by us, through us linking up with somebody else that has proper training. But Lord, be exalted. Empower us, Lord. Raise up your army of persons who love you. Raise up, Lord, the love marchers. People dedicated, Lord, to loving each other. Nobody left out of that. And Lord, to declaring your truth in grace. We trust you, mighty God, Lord. And we ask for this country again. Win Jamaica, Lord, for your kingdom. Win Jamaica for your kingdom, Lord. We trust you and look forward, Lord, to when you will pour out your spirit and restore our family structure and restore our country, restore our, our leaders, mighty God. We want godly leaders, Lord, leaders that would promote love and not allow nastiness to be over the airwaves, that would not 
stand for things that you are opposed to. Oh God, give us Lord that heart for you. In Jesus' name, Amen.